Hello and welcome back for your daily dose of LOLE Sports content, where I'm going to cover the games that took place today in the LCK and LPL, as well as preview tomorrow's games in those regions. Predictions went 3-2 and two on the day, and 133-63 and 63 on the year thus far. First, LPL, FPX, LGD. FPX would win 2-1. to one. Care, 12-3-20, 30% of damage. He played Azir all three games. Life, 3-4-27 at support. He had a rumble in game one. High Chow, 5-8-13, 24% of damage in the loss. So, game one, LGD were ahead by quite a bit at the end of laning phase. 16-15, up 4K gold. Birdall, uh, two solo kills in this one. I believe one was on Jalahu and then the other on Duckdom. A 20 CS lead for the bot lane duo of Xiaoyi um, and uh, Jin Zhao over FPX Duckdom Life. Uh, as the game went along, Meteor was frankly gapping uh, Hung, not Hung, uh, Milky Way in game one, getting things done on the Jin Zhao, going bot lane three times to help LGD's Bot lane to get ahead. Got a couple drakes with that Pryo. Hi Chow on the Nico. Nice alties in the team fights. Duck Dom on the Varus would respond. He was all that FPX really had in game one. Going in their favor. Jalahu dying at will. Um, it's actually funny because Jalahu, in my opinion, in game three was the biggest difference maker. But in game one, he was uh, feeding his face off. Game two tied at 16 minutes. 43 CS lead for Jalahu into Birdall. I would say that's a bit of a diffy. Now that's offset by 36 CS lead for the bot duo of LGD. And in all three games, they would have a significant CS diff. Xiaoyi, a 2v2 kill on the Varus. Milky Way on the Viego would respond, getting kills of his own. Um, looked very good on the champion. Milky Way continues to impress. Care on the Azir. Cleans things up, nice shuffles, nice Emperor Divides, deals a lot of damage, and that's just the case with Azir. I say it all the time, I say the same spiel when I talk about Azir players, because you know what I'm talking about. Um, and right now, with the way that that champion is is uh, in the meta, it is dealing a shit ton of damage. Game 3, 17 minutes, uh, 1.8k gold lead, 4 FPX, 24 CS lead for Jala, who on the Aatrox, he would be a big difference maker in the early to mid game team fights. Uh, 18 CS lead for Care into uh, Hai Chow. And then Care would take that lead on the Azir and once again lead in team fights. And it was him and Jala who carrying the bulk of the load. Duck Dom, not even, I mean, hell, we don't mention him in damage, right? Because he's not really leading the team in damage in this one. He's kind of an afterthought. Um, in, in games two and three. I mean, when the bot duo is behind 88 CS across three games against Xiaoyi and, and Jin Zhao, I would say that's problematic, even though in game one, you could argue, well, LGD camped their lane. Game two, Milky Way or FPX in general would go bot twice. LGD really didn't commit. Um, and in game three, not a lot really happened as Milky Way took all three grub spawns or two grub spawns and Rift Herald um in the first 17 minutes you could argue maybe he was mvp setting them up now there was a key team fight where atrox would go off for the for jalahu that secured those but at the same time meteor was kind of playing second fiddle on that one milky way was on the graves i think in game three ig team world elite world elite would win two to one fofo 11 6 26 33 percent of damage wayward 10 3 22 in top lane on 4, 11, and 15, 25% um, of damage in the loss. So this was, uh, for the lack of a better word, a, a disappointing uh, series out of IG. Um, top side was really all they had um, in this one. So game one at about 14.30, there was a 1.4K gold lead for Team Wii. Um, 18 CS lead for IG's bot duo of On and Wink into Stay and Iwandi. Uh, 14 CS for Wayward into YSKM. Stay on the Senna would get around the rift, making things happen. Um, Stay looked good in all three games at moment in, in moments. And then there were also moments, especially in game three, that had me holding my breath when it came to the rookie. I mean, but that was, we'll get into that. Um, Fofo on the Oriana, nice shockwaves. Dealt damage. Layan on the Lee Sin would respond, getting a triple kill of his own. 
Uh, might have even bet a quadra kill. YSKM on the Gwen would get a couple triple kills in team fights and be able to take the game. Um, although FP, uh, Team We had the lead, it didn't make a much of a difference. And actually, in all three games of the series, the leader at the first turret falling in, in gold did not actually win the game. So game two, 13-15, IG are up 1K gold. Uh, 16 CS lead for their bot duo once again. Uh, but 14 CS lead for Fofo into um, Cryin. Stay on the Varus. Strong. Getting kills. Iwandi on the Bard. Nice. Um, what's the word? A ma magical journey, I don't think is it. But it could be. Um, but he also got around the Rift. Um, he, he tried to go topside with his ulti. He, and, and did he miss some? Yes. Was it cringe at times? Yes. But he was... A threat and being a threat is important um fofo would end up dealing damage in the team fights um hung decent engages and um why is cam continue to fight back throughout the series if there was any player for ig that continued to kind of continue trying to fight it was him game three 11 minute laning phase uh 400 uh gold lead for ig which is like nothing but they were ahead 17 CS lead for the bot lane of Team Wee. Stay on the Twisted Fate. Looked awful in the early game, but recovered by the late game and was the, the key contributor in the final team fights to close it out. Um, on on the Senna had a 2v2 kill. Fofo on the way dealt quite a bit of damage. Once again, I can't say, stress that enough. He leads in damage for a reason. Did not have quite all the kills, but was the biggest contributor in actually securing those kills. Wayward on the Quesante, you could argue he was MVP, he played team fights very well in Game 3, um, and was able to, uh, I think he actually was able to pin, take on out of a team fight that was really important as well. Um, and then stay on the twist of fate, like I said, cleaning things up and um, being impactful in the final team fight. Stay continues to look good. I think maybe actually I could make him MVP. I mentioned him in all three games for doing something positive. Top Esports LNG, top would win 2-0. Cream, 8-2-8, 28% of damage. TN, 7-0-13. I think you could make a case for either or being MVP. LNG, Zika, 1-7-2, 27% of damage in the loss. Um, LNG did not have a lot to go off of in this one. They looked like shit. Um, they swapped Hung in for Mark. They should continue to leave Hung in. I don't think that was the problem. As uh, Tian got around the rift, securing objectives, took um, all four grub spawns in laning phase, took a couple, three drakes to one as well. Um, and frankly, they did made the same amount of plays. So game one, 13-15, topper up 3k gold, 29 CS lead for Jackie Love Mako, um, 20 CS lead for Weiwei into Tian. So he has that gold lead. He has to make things happen because he's chosen to do that as Tian takes objectives and tries to make things happen on the Lee Sin. And then 369 on the Aatrox takes his lead after L, um, Top Esports go to the top lane. Excuse me. And controls team fights on the champion once more. Um, and there wasn't like high kill games. Like this was, these are elite players on both teams, despite LNG's record. So it wasn't an absolute blowout. Um, but, I mean... Top were, were looking really good. Jackie Love had nice alties. I think the Callista was his game one champion. Um, and and uh, Cream on the uh, Zier in game one um, also came through. Game two, 17 minutes, 2.2K gold lead, uh, 25 CS lead for 369 into Zika, 21 CS lead for the bot duo of LNG into Top Esports. Uh, Cream on the Akali once he got online. He was unstoppable. Obviously, that is his champion of choice. That is what he is known for. And he um, he dominated with it, to be to be frank. Um, Tian on the Lee Sin, once again, very strong. Um, you could argue Jackie Love did things in this game as well. But at the same time, I felt like it was Kareem and Tian that were actually doing the majority of, of the work um, in Game 2. And frankly, um, a lot of the work in Game 1 as well. LCK, KDF, and Breon. Breon finally win a series 2-1. to one. Envy returns to the lineup in place of Somber. Going 24-5-11, and 37% of damage. Karas, 9-6-26 in mid. Bull, 8-9-17, 27% of damage in the loss. 
Game one, um, KDF were up 1.1k gold at 17.30. 14 CS lead for Gideon into Cuz. Uh, Morgan on the Quesante, solo killed uh, Dudu. Karis on the Azir secured pretty much all the kills in the early to mid game. And Envy on the Zeri cleaned things up. He had a quadra. Um, and, I mean, was. He returned to the lineup and he said, I want this job back. And was it against a team that's great? No, but KDF are not a slouch. Right, that bot duo Bo Andel has really won some hearts. So for Envy to do a lot of work in this series, I think should keep him in the lineup at least for a little bit longer. Game two, 16 minutes, KDF up two and a half K gold. Uh, at the end of laning phase, uh, 13 CS lead for Gideon. Gideon would actually be ahead in all three laning phases of this game. Um, Bulldog on the Karma. Once again, it was kind of like the Kara situation, but opposite. Um, Bulldog getting all the kills. Um, was a difference maker, Q mantras, all that jazz, um, well, mantra cues and, and all that. Um, it just seemed like, oh, well, he's securing all the kills. He's getting all the gold. Like, Bull would, was doing some things, but at the same time, this is kind of like, okay, well, how far can Bulldog take us? Karis was responding on the rise, but also got picked off at times. And, um, I mean, eventually, KDF just won because... At 16 minutes, not only did they have that gold lead, but they had three Drakes and um, both Grub Spawns and Rift Herald. So it's like, oh, well, good luck now, um, right? You are really behind the eight ball. And I think it even went to Elder in game two. Game three, it was tied at the end of laning phase, and Bro were very active. Gideon got around the Rift, and I think he deserves some credit for that because that is not how Bro usually plays. 16 CS lead for Karis into Bulldog. Um, the bot duo of KDF up 19. Palu on the Nautilus. Unlucky for, well, not unlucky, bro won. Um, but if they had lost, I would say it was unlucky because Nautilus had the three first three kills. Um, and it was not a feeding, not feeding, uh, uh, farming Nautilus. It was a support Nautilus. So you don't really want that. Morgan on the Aatrox did get a solo kill onto Bulldog in this one. Um, in the side lane, Dudu into, on Quesante would return that favor, solo killing Morgan. Um, so you could maybe, Morgan had a couple solos in this one. Bull on the Azrael would bring KDF back. So Bro get ahead and then KDF respond. Um, Envy on the Smolder started just dealing a lot of damage. And, and we've seen Smolders in the very late game look pretty damn oppressive. Um, do I think the champion's OP? Uh, but when a game gets to 40 minutes, it's like, okay, well, good luck. Now he's going to probably... Rain down havoc and, and deal quite a bit of damage, and that's what happened. Um, Cuz on the Maokai. Like, I didn't mention Cuz throughout this series, and I thought in Game 3 towards the end he was um, probably the best he'd been all series long. Um, but it didn't matter because Envy on the small. Oh, yeah, that's why I mentioned him. He stole an objective. I think he stole the Elder. Yeah, that was his highlight. Stole the Elder from Gideon. Gideon had done really well on Smites up until that point. Um, and then Envy. And then it's just Envy after that. So, I mean, dealt 37% of damage. He does not want to lose his job again. HLE Nongshim, HLE went 2 0. Viper 9 0, 15, 28% of damage. Peanut 6 1, 22. Call me 3 8 2, 30% of damage in the loss. Game 1, about 3.5k gold lead for HLE at 1730. 33 CS lead for Viper Delight. Viper on the Smolder. Um, Sylvie did, uh, in my opinion, put Nongshim in a decent position. Um, got both, got two grubs, I think a set of grubs. HLE got a set, and then they took Rift Herald. Um, Nongshim did. And then they also took both Drakes. Um, got some plays off where Peanut really did not. Um, but once the team fights really started taking place, Zek on the Tristana lucked into some kills and then the Tristana was fed and, and the game was just over after that. Um, Peanut on the Maokai nice engages. Obviously the ulti is a facilitating tool that I really think should be offset by Silas. I know Silas isn't very strong right now, but if you see a Maokai, that ulti is something that is really hard to deal with. And the only real re way that I feel you can deal with it is just stealing it for yourself. Game two, under 16 minute laning phase. HLE not ahead by much, only 500 gold, but a 21 CS lead for Peanut on the Vi against Sylvie. Um, and he was getting the better of Sylvie in this one. Got a couple, got grubs. 
Uh, took Rift Herald, took two Drakes, um, pretty much the opposite of what had happened in game one. Uh, he also solo killed Sylvie on the Viego when Peanut's on the Vice, so that's something as well. So maybe you can make Peanut MVP or Zekka. Din Din on the Quesante, solo killed Doran in game two. Doran would respond on the Gwen before the game was over. Um, I think he ended up with like seven kills in this one. Zekka on the Oriana, nice shockwaves. Um, once um, team fights started really raining in, he was getting the majority of the kills. Viper on the Kesa would dive in with alties, get one or two kills in most of the final team fights. I would say there's probably three or four team fights, and he ends up getting at least one kill in each. Um, but at the same time, he was not really... Like, he ends up leading in damage, right? He goes deathless. So you could say, wow, I mean, he had a great series, and he did. It's just like Zekka looked pretty freaking good. Peanut, I thought, looked good. And, um, hell, wasn't even really paying attention to Delight all that much, to be honest with you. Because, I mean, HLE were just kind of winning team fights, um, And, and Nongshim really didn't have a response. Sneak peek for tomorrow. Uh, LPL, Ultra Prime, Thunder Talk. Ultra Prime 1 and 6 lost to Weibo. Thunder Talk 1 and 5 lost to anyone's legend. Last year, Ultra Prime beat them 2 to 1. Half the players are the same. Doggo, 14, 6, 15, 28% of damage. 1XN, 12, 7, 7, and 30% in the loss. RNG, Rare Adam. RNG, 2 and 4 lost to Top Esports. Rare Adam, 1 and 5 lost to OMG. RNG, 1, 2, 0 last year. Half the starters are the same. LWX is back in, LP is back to substitute. Breathe, 8217, 19% of damage. Zhao Zhu, 363, 21% in the defeat. Lastly, the series everyone wants to watch BLG, JDG, BLG 5 and 1, lost to IG, JDG 4 and 0, beat LGD. Last time they played was at Worlds in round 2. JDG would win that best of 1. 7 of the 10 starters remain on the same team. Technically, Knight and Yagao flop right so they would have been nine out of ten kanavi ruler missing 14 4 29 54 percent of damage in the win shun elk and on 4 10 11 46 percent of damage in the loss lck t1 kt t1 8 and 1 um beat nongshim kt 6 and 3 lost to hle last time they played t1 would win 2 to 1 Faker, 14-2, 31% of damage in the win. BDD, 5-8, 27% of damage in the loss. And lastly, Fear X, Gen G, Fear X, 3 and 6. Lost to DK, Gen G, 8 and 1. Beat DRX. Last time they played, Gen G, 1-2-0. Trovi, 10-2-9, 40% of damage. Closer, 1-4-4, four, and 24% four, of damage in the loss. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, become a YouTube supporter, and I hope to see you again tomorrow.